But this morning, we're here to talk to Mr. Joseph Matunjwa, that I'm sure most of you have read a lot about in the last few years. But strangely enough, a lot of people don't know exactly who he is. But uh, just to start off with, um, Mr. Matunjwa, um, you were a member of the National Union of Mine Workers for many, many years, the opposition. Uh, how long were you a member of the, the NUM for? I think I was the member of NUM from 1985 and 86 until up to when I was uh, fired. Yes. <laughs> yeah, from up to <laughs> 1999. And a lot of people actually don't realize that it was um, Douglas Colliery, was it not, in Mpumalanga? That was Douglas Colliery, the then Genco. In terms of numbers from that 5,000 at Douglas Colliery, what do you estimate your numbers are now? Now? Yeah, as we speak. We are over 180,000 members. One of the... Uh, existential moments, one of the key moments in your life was the Marikana, um, infamous Marikana massacre back in 2012. Just tell us a little bit about how you were personally involved. I mean, I understand that, that you went to the copy before the miners um, moved forward against the police on that fateful day. Um, just, just tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I mean, we started recruiting before the Impala. We move uh, to strategize for tomorrow. Then the question was, if the workers tomorrow return back to work, where should they report in terms of induction management? You will engage them in terms of their 12,500. Then we'll meet tomorrow morning on the 16th uh, morning. Then I arrived around about 20 past 8 uh, because I was from Whitbank. I left early hours, around about 1 a.m. Drive to Whitbank, came back in the morning. 20 past 8, I was at LPD. I waited for management until nine, half past nine. They never showed up. Then I got worried. I said, what's going on here? And then subsequent, when they opened the boardroom, the main boardroom, I see the T-shirts of NUM inside. And I saw the SEPs inside. Only to find it was a press conference. The last press conference they had to take a decision to say, today is a D-day. Then I said to the comrade, but it's very wrong of NUM to sit with the SEPs and management to have when management makes such pronouncement. And the member said, no, a few of the comrades that I was with, they said, no, president, don't go back to the mountain uh, because you could see the atmosphere. I said, no, 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 I have to go back because if I don't go back, it might be construed as if I was lining with the management. And then... Bombo went to the torch bearing of the ANC. You remember there was this torch mm. was running around. Then I went to Khaled. I said, Khaled and Naidu, uh, please step down. Because I could see the barbed wires coming in. I said, step down, wait. Please press for the management to engage with the workers because they are prepared to leave as long as they can get a commitment from management. This economy is like a boxer in the 10th round at the moment. One. Two, was it not the former mining minister who said, um, when the elephants fight, the grass is the one that uh, gets crushed? Isn't that what he said? No, it is. But we have to come also to agree that 1994 never brought economical changes in the lives of the majority of the South African. The status quo remained. So if you are talking about closing the gap in such a society that is so unequal, would you use the CPIX? You cannot. If you look at your employment equity, it talks about closing the gap from the highest, from the CEO to the man on the shop floor. So if you are using a CPIX, if a CEO is earning 200,000, you're going to uh, get an increment of 6% as compared to the worker who's earning 5,000, the very the gap is becoming bigger and bigger. So how to close the gap? The only way to close the gap is to defy the CPI-X uh, culture 
of increment as a base for increment. So there is a lot of money that can be spent. That, I mean, the income is an issue. Uh, if it was, uh, I know it's a small money, but it is money. That money could have been well spent. I'm not saying the president shouldn't, but if you take that 240 whatever million, you divide by 700 students, it couldn't give them about 300,000 each. So one degree or two degrees they could have uh, uh, achieved. So uh, I mean, uh, I think is the priorities and discipline in, in the spheres of the government that need to be taken care of. Uh, I said, you know, the problem that you have, don't fall into it, that you love your political party more than South Africa. That's your biggest challenge. Uh, you love your political party more than the country. We mustn't do that. South Africa come first before ANC, before national, before DA, before any formation. South Africa come first. Okay. Well, on that hopeful <laughs> note, thank you very <laughs> thank much, you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.